This is the Orgo Shop and my name is Rod. In this episode, episode 13 on building ELF, I'm just going to take care of a couple of little things or finalize some things I've been working on before moving on. I am working on the uh, rudder and the tiller and the dagger board, but I just needed to finish these things up, kind of just get them off my plate. I'm going to take care of shaping the horns on the bow and the stern, getting the uh, panel on the top of the bulkhead compartments, all sealed down, glued down with epoxy, filleted it in, and all of those plug. So that's what we're going to take care of in this episode. So with the panel's dry fit, I just needed to mark out exactly where I'm going to fill all my holes. I've got these beams down the center. I've got the beam across at the stern portion, and I just need to mark where the other cross section is so I can draw a line and uh, make sure I hit that beam when I throw some holes. None of my rulers span that space so I just cut a stick approximate length and drew that line across the uh, center beam. At this point I'm just drilling all my pilot holes, I'm setting some screws in place, seeing what kind of force is needed to arc this plywood down to the outside perimeter where the cleats are. Because uh, the plywood is only a quarter inch thick and I don't want screws blowing through. After drilling one on either end and on center, I then divided that distance, which is 17 inches, by half, eight and a, sorry, eight and a half, and that in half is a four and a quarter. So I have equal spacing on the uh, screws, and to make sure they're all sort of in a row, because I have not trimmed the overhang of the plywood yet. I just put a block in here and then calculated the distance to the center of the uh, beam that's across there and marked all those locations. So now I can drill all those holes. <coughs> now we're not exactly sure if we're going to leave the screws in, but I am going to set some number six by one bronze screws in. Really at this point in time I am just dry fitting this, get all the screws in place, remove it, and then set some epoxy in there and glue it down. So these screws may come out and we'll decide later whether we leave them in or fill the holes with some sort of decorative little plug, maybe like a yellow seed or something. With the screws across the uh, stern portion of the forward beam, then marking out down the center line. I kind of want all my screws in a nice even spacing. Not even really sure if I'm going to need screws down the center. If I work my way up here, it's going to pull down to those beams anyways. But I definitely want to make sure that it's pulled down and tight with thickened epoxy. So at 39, I went every, uh, okay, time to get the math out. Thirty-nine divided by what? One, two, three, four, five. Well, six spaces equals six and a half inches. Now we'll give that a try. <coughs> so that should be my house more closer to six. That's going to work out fine. 
Now down the perimeter, we have 44. Well, that's an even number. We're looking at about every seven inches, I think, should do it. So with both of the top compartments uh, dry fitted and removed them, I just slapped on a whole bunch of thickened epoxy into those areas after scuff sanding all of the contact areas just to make sure we got a good bond. And uh, with the thickened epoxy in there on both ends, then I just went back and set those panels in with my screws. Now to make sure when pulling this down that I uh, didn't blow screws right through, I actually switched to a number 8 with a washer. I did spray all of the screws with a WD-40 a couple of times just to make sure that none of these steel screws, which tend to be kind of brittle, do not snap off when I try to remove them. And just to make sure they were done, I went around and hand tightened them all. I didn't want to use the impact driver and go too far. Following day, I was able to remove all of the screws and washers, but I did find up at the forward section of each compartment that it actually lifted a little bit. I didn't either get enough epoxy in there or there's just not enough purchase area to make sure that those panels were bonded. So I injected a whole bunch more and screwed them down again and used all of the squeeze up to kind of fill the gap. Now I can move on to cleaning up the overhang with my router, but I can't quite get into both corners. So after trimming it with a flush cutting bit, I then just used a good sized chisel and sander to get in there and clean up those edges. With everything glued down, I'm just going to punch out these holes, countersink them more. We're going to put some yellow cedar plugs in all of these holes. I think it'll look tidier than just sort of Bondo filler or epoxy filler. Once I drilled all the holes out, I just mixed up some thickened epoxy, cut a whole bunch of plugs that will fit into these holes from yellow cedar, kind of put a little thickened epoxy on the end, push them all in the holes, and follow up after all of them are in with just a light tap with a hammer to make sure they're set. Tomorrow, I will take my chisel and uh, clean them all up. So while all this epoxy is setting up, I've been working on the horns, which has a definitive shape to them. There's a pattern of plans, so I roughly cut them with my jigsaw, and then tried to take my spoke shapes into there, but it's end grain, and it just wasn't working very well. So I just moved on to the belt sander, cleaned it all up, and we can use the laminations on the, uh, on the stem itself to make sure that I have Got it kind of square across, the line should be perpendicular to the side. Alright, now I have to admit that in the initial building uh, phase of planking this boat up, I actually carved the inside stem on the bevel a little bit higher than the shear line by accident. So I've got a bit of a dent, you'll kind of see it under the saw there. 
I could just fill it with something, but I decided, you know, when you got lemons, make some lemonade. So we'll make a feature of this by cutting off and making it flush and gluing on a couple of pieces of yellow cedar to each side. Then I will trim these down to the uh, rough shape of the horn with my belt sander again or block plane. Clean it all up and I think it's going to look pretty nice. No one will know that what's underneath there was a little bit of an oopsie. But uh, we clean it all up, sand it down, roughen over the edges. Here it was easier to use a uh, cabinet scraper to get rid of some of the squeeze out epoxy. Wet it down. I think it looks good. A couple more sanding and she is ready for some varnish up there. So that's going to conclude episode 13 with uh, finishing up the bulkhead panel and the horn ends ready for varnish. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Do consider becoming a subscriber. Maybe at least give me a like on uh, YouTube. And we'll see you next time.